Rugby is hardly the first thing that springs to mind when thinking of Italians. Pasta, passion, fashion, sports cars, that makes a lot more sense. So when Fiat decided to enter the rough and tumble bucky sector, they had to come up with a really robust and strong name. So they've gone with fullback. But this fullback looks uh, vaguely familiar, but not out of position. So yes, essentially what you have here is a rebadged Mitsubishi Triton. But that is not a bad base to start from for Fiat with a fullback. They've done the same thing as Mitsubishi, not trying to take on Ford and Toyota by offering a whole host of bucky options. They've kept it very simple. There are three to choose from essentially. You get a 2.4 litre petrol, which is in your single cab, 4x2. That is your entry level. If you want to jump into double cab, they've got two power versions there, both running the 2.5 litre diesel and both of the five speed manual box. There's talk of an auto that's coming later. But you get the 100 kilowatt, 324 newton meter, 4x2 double cab, and the more powerful 2.5 version with 131 and 400 newton meters in this one. This is at the top spec that's got everything bull bars, leather interior, really incredibly well specced. I am really impressed with the interior. With the Mitsubishi Triton in the old days, for me it was one of the buckies that offered the most leg room for the rear passengers. And it's no different this time. With me in full driving position, I can quite comfortably get in the back of the Triton. So the cab is really the place that you want to spend the most time. Luckily in the top spec, it does have a reverse camera, which the others don't have. Because of the cab design, the load bin sits very, very high with a tiny window, making it quite difficult to maneuver the fullback in position and a fullback out of position on the field of play is really in big trouble. Now you've got to understand the bucky market is very set in their way so when Triton originally launched there was a lot of like oh, oh my word how can you have a rounded shaped rear end on a bucky the boys were very confused but over time it's really grown on me and I like it because it's got a different look to now the Amarox and the Rangers which are traditional squared up shapes but what Fiat have done really well here is just subtle changes to the headlights and the rear lights have really made it a lot more in your face a lot more robust a lot more manly and the wheels running in this top spec really look good so you certainly are going to stand out from the crowd driving in your fullback but the interior for me is a really comfortable place what is nice for Fiat tagging onto Mitsubishi and the new Triton is that they've come out with an interior that is at the right level where Toyota was falling behind for so long having to play catch up to Ford. Fiat are coming in at that correct expected level of luxury that a bucky owner now is desiring. It's about lifestyle, not so much the workhorse. So with 131 kilowatts and 400 newton meters of torque, the top spec fullback certainly is ticking all the performance figures on paper. For me driving it, I was a little bit disappointed. The power band is really, really small. And if you're not in that perfect gear, well, your fullback is going nowhere and it's completely out of position. So that was a bit frustrating for me. I know they're talking about the fullback coming out in auto, which would be quite nice because I mean that's where a lot of the other guys have gone but all the other competitors are running six speed gearboxes whereas yeah they're still sitting in a five speed so the fullback isn't really groundbreaking at all in actual fact it's like the old school fullback on the rugby field think Herbert Grobler, Andre Joubert, Johan Jernis dependable, reliable, solid they get the job done now like the Italian rugby team Fiat Professional has been around for many, many years, but obviously the performances are better known in Europe. So it's a really brave move for Fiat to enter here into South Africa, that hectically loyal bucky market. The dreaded highball for the fullback, I believe, is gonna be price. And let me tell you why. People are gonna view this badge and go, this is a new kid on the block in the bucky sector, which it is. So they're gonna expect a price point that's gonna be like a photon tunnel, as an example. And it's not. I mean, entry level single cab is going to set you back 235,000 Rand. Getting into the 4x2 double cab, that's just over 400,000. The top spec we're in, 470,000 Rand. So, in a rugby mad, bucky mad country like South Africa, going with a name like the fullback, very, very clever. My biggest concern is that South Africans could view this as Italy playing the All Blacks in a Rugby World Cup final. 
That's never going to happen, is it?